And um, what can I say about my wife? I mean, you couldn't have a better person here speaking. Um, uh, she's ferocious in, in her protection over her flock and over her children. And that was one of the things that I so loved about her. And she's also uh, just ferocious in her love for God and not willing to compromise in any way. And I've watched it up close for 35 years. And she's been a great example for me. So would you please wish a happy Mother's Day to my wife and welcome her as she gives a word. Thank you, hon. Love you. Thank you, everybody. I almost didn't get here this morning because of the detours. Oh, my gosh. I'll tell you. If I wasn't saved, no, I'm kidding. But the detours, you know, I, I felt like I said, you know, for so many of us, we've had many detours in life. And the temptation is to go back to what's familiar to us. And that's what I felt. I said, I'm the speaker, and I feel like going home and say, forget it, I'm not coming. But every time, I, every turn I took, there was a stinking detour. Anyway, so I just had to get that out. <laughs> got it off my chest this morning. But, but I'm telling you, that's just like the devil. He, he throws us detours in life to let you think that it's never going to change. And, and I was actually shouting that scripture in, in my car. I speak to you, O oh great mountain of obstacle, and I speak grace, grace to you, and you will become a mere molehill. And that's, you know, for many of us right now, you're in a stinky place. You're in a place of despair, discouragement, hopelessness. You don't see your way out. I didn't see my way out. Even I couldn't remember the address here. So it's a new place for us. And so, you know, but God knew. Amen. And, and he showed me the way out. And so I just want to encourage you, wherever you're at, it's not a hopeless situation. You may say, I don't sense the Lord. Well, I'm telling you, he's there. If you cry out to him, give him your heart, surrender. It's not your way. It's his way. And so I just want to encourage you with that because I know how frustrating it is. I was just driving and I was frustrated trying to get here, and, uh, but I got here, so praise the Lord. So for those of you that right now are having a hard time, I just want to encourage you, the Lord will never, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. But sometimes our heart becomes so calloused that it's hard, you know, even though he's wooing us and he's speaking to us, sometimes we don't recognize that, you know. So just say, God, help. You know, he's easy. He's very simple. Just help me. Amen. And uh, so I just want to encourage you with that today because, Lord, I was praying, help me have a right heart attitude before I come to church this morning. <laughs> but anyway, so praise the Lord. So today's Mother's Day. So we want to honor all the moms. Yes. Yeah. And the spiritual moms, the aunts, uh, you know, all of our girlfriends. We want to honor you today. And, uh, you know, being a mom is a great privilege, but it's also a tough job. And um, man, I mean, you love your kids and you're praying for them and you're believing God for great things. And you know, life happens. There's obstacles that comes your way. But thank God we have a hope and that we can trust God. Thank God. I don't know how people do it without the Lord. Amen. I mean, you need to, you know, you probably need to be drinking or doing drugs or something. But other, see, but God is free. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is free. And you get that free uh, peace and that supernatural peace that only God can give, and it's really awesome. So anyway, we don't want our situations to defy the promises of God, right. and God has great things in store for us, and um, I, I'm just rejoicing. I, I just, every time I think about what the Lord has done for me, Amen. there's a song I want to shout, shout, That's shout, right. shout, shout. Right. I, I really, last night I was pondering because I couldn't sleep either last night. <laughs> But God is good. <laughs> um, I was just thinking about it. I said, Lord, I don't know that I would even be alive right. if it hadn't been for you on my side. Because, you know, life, you know, you just, it's, things can seem so darn hopeless. Or if you're battling depression or fear, like I had struggled with a lot, you know, it's just you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But he is the light. Amen. And that's the cool thing about God. You know, in our natural mind, it doesn't make sense that this is the God that's going to change my life? Well, I'm telling you, that's fact. Amen. That's what he does. He transforms our lives as we yield and surrender to him. So, again, I just, I just thank God for that. So my husband said, I wrote here, moms are ferocious. <laughs> and we are, especially over our kids. Amen. Don't mess with our kids because you're going to get hurt. And um, 
but, but that's how we are even spiritually over our spiritual kids. But that's how the Lord is over us. Yeah. He's ferocious over us. He loves us with his everlasting love. And, and he wants the best for us. He's not waiting for you to blow it and, and whack you over the head. That's not God. That's, right. that's a religious mindset. That, that, that just, you know, gives you a narrow understanding of who he is. He's love. Now, he lo those whom he loves, he corrects. Don't get me wrong. But, but it's not that I'm going to beat you up over the head and I'm going to teach you a lesson. That's not God. That's a, re that's a religious spirit. And so that spirit just wants to take us out. And that's what we're going to address this religious spirit and this antichrist structure that hates women. And, and we're going to address this today because God is, he wants the men and women to work together. So I'm going to start out with Proverbs 31 here. And uh, in the Passion Translation, it says, who could ever find a wife like this? She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. She's full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels, and her husband has entrusted his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. Now, in the King James, or New King James, it says she is a virtuous woman. And it's a really interesting word, and I'm going to bring it out. The, the, word is, uh, the Hebrew word is chayil. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's C-H-A-Y-I-L. And it means military prowess, might, virtue, grace, War, watchmen, army of special forces. All right? And so that's who the women are. And, and actually, you know, when I was meditating on this, basically it's really like a metaphor of the church because we all are the bride of Christ. And God is calling us to be that, that military army that rises up who knows who we are in Christ. And, um, you know, uh, you know, again, I mean, it is for the women, but I, but I see this twofold and that God is calling the men and women to rise up together. Amen. And, uh, but women are no, you know, joke. And, um, but the world, the enemy, the religious system has, you know, for a gazillion years, especially in the Middle East, has sought to, to uh, cause the women to feel inferior or less than, or she belongs in Sunday school, or, you know, she needs to be in the backdrop. Women, you know, you don't have say. Well, that's not scriptural. Amen. It's not scriptural. And so God has called us, and, and you'll see why. He's called us to work together because in order to complete the apostolic mission, the, the kingdom mission that God has for us, men and women need to work together. And so in Genesis 2.18, it says here, um, it says, now the Lord God said, it's not good or beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him. Huh. So the word helper in the Hebrew is ezer kenego, and it's derived from a Hebrew word, which means to come alongside to aid, to assist, or to rescue. One who supplies strength where lacking, military strength, and it suggests a great role of honor. And again, I, again, I see the twofold um, meaning here of the bride of Christ, that we, that's who God has called us to be. But I'll focus on women today. So chayel comes from two, straight, two words, two root words, and it means to be strengthened or to have strength and to be powerful. So Genesis uh, 2.18 can be translated, I will make a power and strength corresponding to man. Now, in the Jewish study, the Jewish sage, this is what they said, the woman was never meant to be an assistant or a helpmate to the man. The word mate slipped into English language. But what God had intended then was to make a power or strength for the man who would in every way correspond to be his equal. Yeah. All right? And so, uh, again, it was, it's a really a, 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 really a demonic plan of the enemy to cause women to walk behind. Right. To cause women to feel as though you don't have a say or to, you, you know, be inferior. Now, where it got off course is the women's lib thing where, you know, and, and listen, I understand. I'm not saying it was right, but I can understand why women's lib, why that whole movement came forth. It was because of the abuse. Right. Many were being abused. And they said enough is enough, but they went about it the wrong way. See, I'm not, what I'm talking about today is honor. I'm not talking about, I honor my husband. I thank God for my husband who's always honored women. You've always honored me. My husband's always honored me. Never felt, he never treated any of us women here as though we're inferior or less than. Never. He's always supported women. 
and, and that where Jesus Christ is Lord, women are liberated. Amen. Women are honored. And so that needs to be, you know, the, 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 the word of the Lord today. I've been in churches in this day and age where women aren't allowed to speak. Are you kidding me? That is not scriptural. And that is a religious spirit. And it's, it's a design of the enemy to prevent the full power and strength of God to come forward. Because in Genesis, it says we're made male and female in God's image. And when you do a study on it, he's male and female. So it makes sense to have the women and men walk together. I'm not, I don't want to be my husband. I don't want to uh, walk in what he's called to. And he doesn't want that for me. I know who I am. He knows who he is. So it's not a competition, but we complement each other. Yeah. And we need each other. I need my husband to help me move forward as he needs me. That's how God designed us. And even if you're not married, you know, the Lord knows exactly who you need to be connected with yeah. and how to move forward. So it's not like, oh, wow, well, if I'm not married, then I don't have the strength. No, you have it. Yes, you because do. God provides a way for every one of us. But women are not inferior. And women, you have to rise up and recognize you have a voice. Yeah. The Lord has given you wisdom. When you study some of the women in the Bible, they changed the nation. They changed their, their cities. They changed situations. So did the men. Right. So again, I just want you to hear my heart. It's not a women against a man thing. It's us honoring one another and supporting each other in our role. So Eve was, let's see what I have here. Eve, Eve was designed, this is from that, uh, the Jewish sage. Um, you can find all this on Blue Letter Bible. Eve was not designed to be like Adam. She was designed to be the mirror opposite of Adam, possessing the ha other half of the qualities, responsibilities, and attributes that he lacked. Designed to be the opposite but fit perfectly to create life. Eve was Adam's complete spiritual equal endowed with an essential saving power that was opposite of his. This is from that Jewish study. Isn't that good? I'm going to repeat that one. Eve was Adam's complete spiritual equal, endowed with essential saving power that was opposite of him. I love that. The Jew this Jewish study also described men and women facing each other with arms raised, holding an arch between them, giving a beautiful picture of equal responsibility. So, you know, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm grateful for where we're at, and I'm grateful for people we're connected with and honor women. Yes. I mean, we've had it in our church where people left because they didn't feel a woman had a right to speak. That's ridiculous, yes. okay? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Study the Bible because you had one scripture where Paul said a woman shouldn't speak it was because it was a cultural thing. The men would sit on one side, the women on the other, and they would shout out to each other. It was a cultural thing. Right. I mean, throughout the Bible, men and women led, and right. they worked together. Paul, most of the apostles were women that worked with Paul, just saying. Okay, so now we're going to go to Judges 4. Now, Judge, you know, and I know most of us are pretty familiar with uh, this portion of Scripture in, uh, with the, prof the prophetess, Deborah, I'm, I'm going to refer to a couple of different people in the Bible, but ju uh, the Lord really spoke to me about uh, speaking out of Judges 4 with Deborah, and she was a prophetess, she was a judge, and she was a wife, all right? So Judges 4, 4 through 10, and I'll try to skim through this whole thing, it says, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time, and she used to sit to hear and decide disputes under the palm tree of Deborah. And she sent a word, and the people, uh, let me back up, the people were crying out, and they were saying, look, we've been under oppression for 20 years, and we can't take it anymore. Sort of like what we're going through now, you know? Maybe it's not 20 years, but it seems like it. Sheesh. Since March, I mean, we're like, you know, this being sequestered is like over the top right now. And so, um, but they were crying out. And when have you ever seen people from around the world praying the way people are praying? I'm telling you, this thing has really gotten us on our knees. If you never prayed before, you're praying now because we want out. <laughs> so anyway, God have mercy on my soul today. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a detour. Anyway, so she sent word and summoned Barak, the son of... Abinamoam, I don't know how to say these words, so have mercy on me. 
from Kadesh Naphtali and said to him, Behold, the Lord, the God of Israel, has commanded, Go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men of war from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulon. I will draw out Sisera, now, uh, and I'll explain all this, the commander of Jamin's army, with, you, with his chariots and his infantry to meet you at the river Kishon, and I will hand him over to you. And Barak said, Uh-uh, if you will not go with me, then I'm not going. She said, but if, and he said, but if you will not go with me, I won't go. And she said, all right, that's okay. She said, but nevertheless, the journey, she was prophesying. She wasn't putting him down. She was prophesying. She said, I certainly will go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you take will not be for your honor and glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went to Barak and to Kadesh, and Barak summoned the army. Now, let me just say this. First of all, um, this, this King Jabin was a wicked man. He was evil. And they had, they had all this military support and this military equipment. And the interesting thing about Jabin is his name meant intelligence. So basically, if you want to look at it metaphorically, what we're looking at is there was a war between the minds. Isn't that the way the enemy attacks us, right? It's all in the head. It's all the lies that we've listened to. It's the root system of our hurts that we have not addressed is how we get our behinds kicked. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. It's time to break out of that old mindset that has kept you in defeat because God says that we are more than conquerors and we are victorious, all right? So what happened is he has 900 chariots of armor. Think of armored vehicles, those armored things that they use in the war, um, those things, yeah. And so think about 900 of them against people that are just footmen. Right. What do they have, bow and arrows? I mean, come on. So in the natural, it looked totally impossible. You know, and I know we can relate with a lot of our situations. And so I feel here, I don't, listen, Barak was not a wimp because he had 10,000. She said, you go and get your men, get the tribe to, to fight. Um, you know, this army. If he were a wimp, he would not have been able to accomplish that. I look at this as the apostolic and the prophetic, the man and the woman, knowing who they are working together. She prophesied and said, a woman will take out Sisera. And so what happened was when they went to war, the Israeli army defeated all of Jabin's army. It was a miracle yeah. that that took place, but one got away. And who guess who that was? Sisera. And so Sisera then, you know, went to Jael's tent, and because uh, her husband knew him, and they thought they were allies, but she had it. She was going to take him out, and she said, "No, devil, you are not coming into my home to wreak havoc." And so she was wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. He came in, he went to sleep, and she put the tent peg. Guess where? Through his head. Right. Are we dealing with a mindset that God is asking us to deal with at this time? She said, devil, you are not coming in here yeah. with your slick self, coming to uh, manipulate and twist words and wreak havoc in my home. See, the women are the watchmen. So are men, but women are watching. Who's up in the middle of the night most of the time praying? Women. Who's at the church at prayer meetings? Women. But men need to rise up and come because we need both to, together to, to, for this force to be, uh, you know, to raise up a force like it never before in a kingdom of God. So she put the ten peg through his head and destroyed the enemy. And so the enemy was defeated. And so she was a wise and God-fearing woman. She held open court. She urged the people to turn back to God. And the other thing, I just wanted to back up. I forgot to mention Lapidoth. I think that's how you say her husband's name. His name meant torch. And he was a fiery torch, the, the spirit of the living God and, and Deborah. See, they worked together. Then I was reading another commentary, and it said that they, some suggest that Barak was uh, Lapidoth. You know how they all had different names? and that they could have been a husband and wife. Who knows? That was just a suggestion. But I love, his name means lightning. So again, lightning to me represents our intercession, the torch, the torch of God, the fire of God, the sevenfold spirit of the Holy Spirit, you know, working together. See, it's not one will put a thousand, a thousand of light, two will put 10,000. It's the spirit of God. It's we need each other to accomplish what he, he has for us in this season. 
in any season, really. And so um, they, they were working together. And so he, um, you know, supported his wife. And so um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, just going back to Jael, when she took that tent peg, she was decreeing over him that, you, you know, this thing that you've lied to me, even about uh, bloodline issues in my family, I'm taken out. I say no to that. See, we're in that time of, of declaring, right? right? This is the era of pay. Watch what you're saying. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. But I really believe that there is a, a generational blessing that was released because she destroyed the curse that kept speaking into her of defeat. And so right now, I just want you to encourage yourself and say, wait a second, I have the power of the blood of Jesus. And in our natural mind, this sounds crazy, but in the spirit realm, it's powerful. Yeah. And that what the enemy has set out for evil in my life and my family's life is defeated yeah. through the power of the blood. We have seen too many miracles. That's we have right. seen all of our lives here have been restored. Right. We were on a path like today. I was on a detour, a path that was trying to prevent me from getting to where I needed to go. But God got me back on, on track. And if you're on a path, right now that you may feel that you, you, I, I just don't know where the heck I'm going, how I'm going to get out of this mess. Well, I promise you, God has a purpose and a plan and a strategy for you, a destiny. God wants to heal your broken heart. I know there are people watching that have feel shame. You feel defeated. I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you right now Amen. to bring healing. He says, I came to heal the brokenhearted. You may not seem a way, to, you know, to have a way out, but God has one. He has a plan. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He has a plan. He's not surprised by any of this. So cry out to him. Give him that chance. That's what somebody said to me when they were ministering to me. They said, what do you have to lose? Because I thought they were all crazy. I didn't want to hear what they had to say. He, they said, what do you have to lose? Depression. Depression, fear, suicidal thoughts, drugs, alcohol. What do you have to lose? And I thought, well, but I'm not going to let them know because these people are crazy. I don't like the way they worship. I don't like what they do. I said, it scared me. <laughs> but then I just thought, well, it's either that or I die, you know, one or the other. And cried out to God. And his Mother's Day, what a great time. <laughs> to, to just cry out. There's a mother side of God. There's a, it's, it, you know, some people say, oh, don't say that. But it's the many breasty one. He's the, the nourisher. Yeah. He's the compassionate side yeah. of God. He's El Shaddai, Almighty God. And one of the definitions, the God of utter destruction. Don't mess with my kids. Right. That's how much he loves us. He turns our lives around. So I just yeah. implore you, give him a chance. So, um, in Judges chapter 5, I don't know if I typed the whole thing out. Uh, oh, I did, in the message version. Um, in Judges 5, it says this, In the time of Shamgar, son of Anath, and in the time of Jael, listen to this, public roads were abandoned, travelers went by backwards. Warriors became fat and sloppy, no fight left in them. Then you, Deborah, rose up. Then you got up a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders who then fought at the gates. This is their song after they won the battle. And when Deborah rose up as this warrior that gave instruction, that prophesied, she was a prophet, and she prophesied with the apostles, she prophesied with the ecclesia. It said that things turned around in their land. The warriors became fat and sloppy. They had no fight in them. There was, they were uh, passive. They were slothful. And see, this situation that we're in has really given us a, a, an eye's view, a God's eye's view of where we're all at. Right. Are you fat and sloppy in the spirit? Or are you strong and passionate for this, and you have the zeal of the Lord? Now, this isn't a put down. What this is is God saying, where are you at? Okay? Where are you at? Are you still battling with tremendous fear of death, fear? What are you battling with? We are the ecclesia, the church, the light. We're the burning torches for God's kingdom. We can't be hiding in the back Amen. when God has given us power and authority to move forward. People are looking to see what we believe yeah. in. People are looking to see uh, where we're at. I trust God. That's 
The Lord says to trust in him with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. There we got the mind thing again. I have to, uh, Lord, either I trust you or I don't. He's brought so many of us through so many miracles that now we're going to back up. Government's not going to tell me what, who I can serve and what I believe in. I mean, this is getting crazy now. We all need to raise our voices and say enough is enough. And so we have that right to, to rule in our sphere and, and, you know, through our prayer life, through our stance, through our, our living, through our life, God is the God of impossibility. I was reading this morning in my devotional time about uh, Sarah. Actually, maybe I'll go. Well, let me finish up here. I'll go to her in a minute. So they, they until Deborah rose up. So we are Deborahs, men and women. We are Deborahs here. It's not a gender thing. Remember the Bible in the New Testament says there's neither male nor female, right? Greek nor Jew. In the spirit, we're one. So Deborah's arise. We have to rise up and be who we are called to be, that, 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 that where warriors became fat and sloppy, where people been hiding out or backed up. Lord, you're saying rise up. Let the warriors rise up. So God wants us to be the spiritual mothers and fathers. He wants us to be, you know, the people that have hope in us. And so I was, here's what I was reading. I, I, I plan to say this, but I was reading in Genesis this morning. But in Hebrews 11, 11, we have Sarah. And I love the way it's worded in, in this version. It says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, we all know the story. When the Lord spoke to Abraham, I think she was in her 90s and he was 100. And the angel of the Lord came and said to him, you know, uh, your wife's going to have a baby. And she was listening in the tent and cracked up laughing like, yeah, right. You know, like some of us would have been doing, right? And so then when she got approached by it, she, she said, oh, no, I didn't do that. You know, but God knows all things. He knows our heart. But... Um, but that's where, like, again, where some of us are at, I felt like the Lord said, is, and this is my question to you from Genesis. In Genesis 18, 14, it says, is anything too hard for the Lord? What are you dealing with today? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. And no. so the Lord wants us to know that we have his DNA. We have that roar of the lion of Judah within us. We have that passion, the zeal of the Lord, male and female, but women rise up. Don't allow the, 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 the voices that have spoken over you from the past to say you're inferior. As a matter of fact, Lord, I take authority yeah. over that lion spirit, that, that religious spirit and that antichrist spirit that hates women, yeah. that has tried to cut you off and push you back. We take authority over that now in Jesus' name. We say women rise up. Women rise up. We break off that religious spirit. In Jesus' name, that antichrist structure, and we loose the power of the blood of Jesus and decree your freedom that you have the mind of Christ. You hear and you decree his word. I'm thinking of the woman, the wise woman of Abel, when Joab came and was going to wreak havoc in their city. And she said, she, the Bible said that she was a mother of Israel, a nurturer, a mother who loved her family, who loved the nation, that loved her city. And she said, what's going on here? And he said, we're after this guy, Sheba. And she says, yeah, come here tomorrow. She says, because I'll have his head and I'll throw it over the wall for you tomorrow. See, that's who we are, women. But it was through her wisdom. Because yes, yes. the Bible said it was her wise, the wise woman of Abel. Yes. See, do you understand, as I'm bringing out these different women, do you understand why the enemy's goal is to shut the women's mouth? Yes. To not work alongside of the man, to not work alongside of church or in, in, even in a secular world. Do you understand? Right. Because of the, the power and authority right. that we work together. Amen. So, so in Hebrews 11, Sarah herself, she received strength. And I love that word receive means lambano, and it means to take hold with violence. She claimed it. She's like, all right, I don't know how in the world you're going to do this, God, but I'm grabbing hold of this thing. You're the God of the miracles. You're the God of the miraculous. Well, I want this miracle. And then it says strength means dunamis power. It was a dunamis power. The Holy Spirit came upon her. Holy Spirit, dunamis power. That's where that comes from. That's what, see, again, we're not in a natural thing here. God is the God of the supernatural. How in the world did he split the Red Sea? It wasn't through someone, uh, like, meditating and doing their new age stuff. 
It was through God. It was a supernatural breakthrough that caused the sea to split. And so listen to this. Conceive in the Old Testament is Yaakum, and it means to get hot. And she got hot with a passion for the Lord. When the zeal of the Lord consumes you, there is no stopping you. No one's going to tell me that my God is not a God of the miraculous. When he, when he imparts that, when you have encountered miracles, when you have seen God break through in your life, when there was no way in the world he could have done it, man, you were hot with a passion and the zeal of the Lord. No one's going to tell me different that my God isn't alive. He's alive. He speaks to us. We, that's why we worship the way we do Amen. it's not some crazy thing like we have something that, like we don't have things to do on Sunday morning right I mean come on we're here because there's a there's a breaker anointing that comes as we all gather together so she she was this woman of passion and so God is releasing his passion women I'm asking you rise up Allow the passion of God to rise up because he is really, and I'm telling you, the Lord is calling women to be the wailing women on the wall, to wail and cry out in our intercession and our prayers, to decree that thing, to take a stand. We have to take a stand for ungodly stuff that's been out there. That's our role. Yes. It's the men's role, but we need to work it together. It's not, yes. oh, Lord, what are we going to do about this? Baloney. He's given us a charge, right. and he's commissioning us to be the, the church that God has called us to be, to rise up, not be wimps, and, and just let the government roll over us? I don't no. think so. I don't think so. Amen. That's ridiculous. And so, you know what? We pray for our governors. We pray for the leadership. Yes. But, but when it comes to to really coming against our First Amendment rights and certain things, the church has to rise up Amen. now. Amen. Anyway, so... Run for office. <laughs> run for office, Lord. I don't know how good... <laughs> that wouldn't be a good thing for me. So anyway, so even where your dreams have been dead, even where you, you feel like your spiritual womb is locked up, I decree an unlocking today. Yeah. I decree a birthing anointing yeah. that you will birth anew. We're in this transition season, and we are on our faces. We are crying out to God, and we are saying, Lord, we are birthing the new. We are not going back. Even though the temptation may be there, like today, I felt like going home and say, forget it. <laughs> I am not coming to church. But I didn't because I knew I had to. But no, no, but I didn't, you know. And so we, we all have these temptations to give up. But I'm saying to you, don't give up. Amen. Don't give up. Sarah didn't give up. The wise woman of Abel didn't give up. You have Hannah, amazing story. She didn't give up. She cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm with bitterness of soul. You know, my adversary has all these kids. I'm serving you. She's making fun of me, and I'm barren. What's up with that? Right. Have you ever felt that? You watch the things of people that aren't serving God, and it seems like everything's great. It's like, God, have you forgotten me? Right. But she cried out to God. She released the bitterness and the sorrow in her heart, and she cried out, and God heard her prayer, and she birthed Samuel, a prophet. He was one of the greatest prophets. See, that's what the enemy's trying to stop with all of us. He doesn't want us to birth in this new season. He wants us to get caught up in the detours. Right. He wants us to get caught up in the shame, the disappointment, the hatred, or the unforgiveness of the people that hurt us. Don't allow that to stop you up. Yeah. God is saying, I'm releasing and unlocking over your lives. He wants you to break out. He wants you to move forward. That's the new word. Move forward. Don't, be get, don't get stuck here. And, and you know what? Give up your right to be right. What is your point of trying to keep focused on what has happened and, and the woe is me and, and how it hurt? I'm not denying that it doesn't hurt, but is it, does, it's going to keep hurting if you stay there. Right. But it's like, Lord, I hate this situation that I'm in. I give it to you. Help me to choose to forgive. I want to be that person of passion. I want to have that zeal of the Lord that my eye is fixed on you, not on everybody else. And then the other thing is stop blaming people. These women, I'm sure they had their moments. Uh, what's her name? Did uh, Hannah. She was blaming Penaniah, who agitated her. Day and night, it says. Right. But then it comes to a time when we have to take ownership of our own stuff. Yeah. And don't be afraid of that. Don't be ashamed of that. God is not looking to humiliate or shame any of us. He's just saying, own your stuff. Repent. Cry out to me. 
and he will help you. There's counseling. We, there's, we have so much stuff available for us now. Amen. We do so much ministry. We've seen lives change. I've seen my own life. God, he loves us so much. So I want to encourage you with that. So in Hosea 2, 14 through 15, it says, Therefore, behold, I will allure Israel and bring her into the wilderness. And I will speak tenderly to her. We're, we're the Israel here. We're in the wilderness. We, you know. And he said, I will speak tenderly, tenderly to her. And he said, and I will give her vineyards from there and make the valley of Acre a door of hope and expectation. I love that. Anticipating the time when I will restore my favor on her. And she will sing there and respond as in the days of her youth. But listen to this. Wilderness is midvar. And it's, it, there's the root word debar, which means a command to speak to one another. But it also means to properly arrange and put in order. And I want to declare to you this wilderness season we have been in is producing a new order in our lives. Yes. Amen. Do it, Lord. A new order. But we have to say yes to that. Yes. All right, and so God wants us to have an expectation of hope, not defeat. He wants us to be persistent and never give up. And I'm going to close with this. I don't even know what time it is. Um, in Luke 18, and I love this portion with this lady. And I love the fact that they, we don't know her name, but this lady wasn't given up. And uh, in Luke 18, 1 through 3, it says, now Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make a point that at all times they ought to pray and not give up and lose heart. And in a certain city, city there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for man. And there was a desperate, get the word, desperate widow in that city. And she kept coming to him saying, give me justice mm -hmm. and legal protection from my adversary. Right. She's like, I am not leaving you. You better give me justice. Yes. And so sometimes you might think, oh, God, I'm, you know, I feel so inferior. I don't want to bother him. You need to bother him. You need to press forward. You need to push. You need to cross over. You need to birth. That's a violent act. Birthing is a violent act. If you ever gave birth, you need to be pushing and pushing and pushing until you give birth. And so it says here, um, so, um, so she said, give me justice. That word not to not faint means, listen, Jesus is saying this. Don't become spiritless. Don't be wearied out. Don't lose heart. Don't lose courage. Don't faint. Don't be exhausted. This is the Lord admonishing all of us. He's releasing the breath over all of us. He's, giving, he's reviving us right now. He's giving us mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And it says here, he, she said, avenge me, and it means to vindicate of one's right. Judicial here, it's a judi judi la, la, judicial term, and it means to protect and to defend her adversary. Who's our adversary? The enemy. And it's an opponent in a suit of law. An execution of a sentence of law. And then where it says the judge was wearied, listen to this, it means to beat black and blue. To smite so as to cause bruises like a boxer buffets his body. So here's what, here's what the Lord is saying to us. Don't give up. Keep pressing that you get justice from your adversary. Now, in a court of law, if... You know, the adversary, you know, has something against you. You need to make it right. So, again, like I've been speaking through this message, if you have hatred, if you have unforgiveness, if there's been abuse and your heart has been broken, or even just this fear of, of the economic situation, fear of, of whatever, you know, hatred for um, different people like the governor. I've heard it. I saw it online. Anyway, you need to repent because, see, we have to, God's ways are in our ways. Right. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Who the heck wants to do some of that stuff? But that's what he requires of us. So it's like, Lord, help me. Right. Lord, I choose to honor you. And I choose to allow you to lead my life out of the detours. I choose to allow you to allow that breaker anointing come upon my life and, and remove the scales that have been on my eyes that have prevented me from seeing you for who you really are. Yeah. You're not a religious God. You're not an antichrist structure that hates women, that wants to abuse women as a, a sexual thing. That's all they see her as. That is such a demonic thing. Women, rise up. You're better than that. Yeah. You don't need to be a woman that's going to be flashing all your stuff. You don't need to do that. You need to be a woman who honors and respects yourself because the enemy wants to just destroy you and humiliate you. 
So God is saying to us today, is there anything that the enemy can have against you? That could be an open door, moms, spiritual moms, men and women, that can try to take you out. Is there anything there? Ask them. Sometimes we really have blind spots and we don't recognize it. But if you do, just ask him to forgive you. Choose to forgive yourself and shut the door. Loose the power of the blood of Jesus. But I'm saying to you, don't give up. Give me legal right from my enemy. I decree, don't stop. Don't give up. Be persistent in your cry for your life, for your family, for your business. Be persistent. God's got your back. He's put it all in us. We have that fight in us. All these, these fights, all these things that, that took place in the Bible were impossibilities, seemingly in the natural. But God provides a way of escape. He provides the miracle. So let faith arise. Amen. So I'm going to just pray. So, Lord, we just thank you. I just really sense there, there are some women that you have experienced loss, even a loss of a child. I just lose the compassion of the Lord over you, that only God can heal your broken heart. And Lord, you have bottled up your tears, <coughs> excuse me, and you have the hairs upon your head numbered. Lord, I just ask that you wrap your everlasting arms around about them and comfort them. There have been women who have been abused. God never wants that. He didn't want you being in a relationship of abuse. Get out of that. That's not God. That's a religious system that says you stay in a relationship where you get beat. That's, right. That's not God. The Lord wants restoration. Now, God can restore anything, but he didn't want you beat. So, Lord, we just, uh, for those that are battling, just even feeling sad today. <sighs> Mother's Day, being alone, maybe your mom's gone on to be with the Lord or and maybe you just never had children. Lord, you see it all. And Lord, you know how to meet our every need. You know how to touch our hearts. And I loose the blessing of the Lord. I loose the healing balm of Gilead over each and every one here today. I thank you, Lord, that one of the most important things is you're a God of love and you love us so much. You're not looking to kick us, beat us. You're looking to honor us. You're looking to direct us. You're looking to convict us. You're looking to guide us. You want to prosper us. You want to bless us because that's who you are. And so, Lord, I just thank you for this day which you've made and we choose to rejoice in it. I bless each and every mom, grandmother, aunt, niece, daughter, friend. I bless you and enjoy your day and know that you are loved and you are blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.